Now that personnel records have been created, we need to establish access for our new users. The first and most commonly used module for a standard user is timekeeping. Let's give our users access to this module with their appropriate charge codes. Step 2A. Establishing time access. We are going to navigate to two key menus for establishing timesheet access, both of which are located in sequence and found under Accounting Personnel. Time and Expense Users is the first menu and is where we will decide which users receive timesheets in the system. Work Authorizations by Person is where we will determine which charge codes our users receive on their timesheets. The Time and Expense Grid is your control hub for establishing which users will receive different authorities when they log into the system. The rows seen here will automatically populate once the personnel records have been created. Code, name, username, notification email, and personnel active will default to what's listed on the user's personnel record. For username, the system will list invites at procast.com until the invitation is sent and accepted by the user. Once accepted, it will automatically update to the email used by the employee. Notification email is the address that the invite will be sent to, which may be changed if necessary. For standard timesheet users that will not be given approval rights, complete the following three columns. First, check the time column to activate timekeeping. Next, insert the pay cycle that the user should be added to. This can be weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, etc. to match how your company operates. We recommend making separate groups for employees and non-employees to be able to process timesheets in different batches. Then, insert the approval group that the user belongs to. For both pay cycle and approval group columns, you can see available codes by selecting F9 on your keyboard. If a cycle or code needs to be created, it can be done so by navigating to Setup, Time and Expense. For users that will be given approval or administrative rights, complete the following additional checkboxes. Supervisor approvers approve the overall timesheets completed by their subordinates. Our system allows for primary and secondary approvers for each group. Project approvers approve time completed for specific task orders on subordinates' timesheets. Our system also allows for primary and secondary approvers for each task order. Viewers are individuals that can view others' timesheets, but do not have the rights to approve or disapprove them. T and E admins can view all things related to timesheets and expense reports in the system. This is the highest level of power in regards to time and expense and should be provided sparingly. However, it is recommended at least two users have access to this menu. If any approver or viewer rights are checked, proceed to their corresponding menu under Setup, Time and Expense to determine which groups they will approve or view. Now that access has been established, let's navigate to Work Authorization by Person to create charge codes for the users. Setting up charge codes for users is a pivotal step in allowing them to record time appropriately. Before we get into which fields are required and which are optional, I want to point out a shortcut in this process. If you are going to be providing access to charge codes that other employees already use in the system, you can select the Copy From button in the bottom right hand corner to populate the new user's grid. This will save you from typing repeat codes for each new person and simplifies the process. However, if you are creating charge codes from scratch, there are five required columns to complete. Account 
is the type of labor expense to be used by employees. This can be direct labor, overhead labor, a fringe benefit, etc. Task is required if the type of labor selected is direct. This will tie the hours recorded on timesheets to your contract's task orders. Labor category ties to the type of work being performed on the contract. Pay code ties to the type of pay being made, such as regular, overtime, vacation, leave without pay, etc. Selecting the active checkbox will activate the charge code. Once those five columns have been filled out, employees will have what they need to charge time. However, you can also complete the following three columns for more information. Budgeted hours, start date, and end date can be entered so that employees can track how many hours they have remaining on their charge codes. You can make these values hard caps so that employees cannot charge past the hours allotted or outside the date range. This is controlled under Setup, Company Information, and Settings. As a tip, if you're establishing new charge codes for all employees by task order, it can be more efficient to do so by using the Work Authorizations by Task form under Setup, Time and Expense. Now that we've created charge codes, let's import our setup data into the timekeeping module. This can be done by navigating to TE Admin, selecting Import Setup Data, and selecting Import. At this point, timesheet access has been established. If this is all you are providing to your end users, you can skip ahead in the video series to the last step, inviting users to the system. If you are providing expense reporting, management reporting, or accounting access as well, continue along in the series.